Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do a nonlinear regression in SPSS. So if you're not familiar with linear regression, I'll encourage you to check out uh, my videos on linear regression first, uh, and then move on to nonlinear regression, which I think is a very, very underutilized uh, statistical technique, which can, can, which can uncover uh, either statistical effects that are statistically significant that you will not find using only linear regression or uh, you will find even greater predictive capacity with your regression equation if you add a nonlinear component to it. And so in this video series I'm going to be looking specifically at what's called a quadratic function. And in simple terms that means when there's only one bend in the regression line. So let's get started. First, I'm going to show you what a, or remind you what a uh, linear regression is very quickly. I'm going to, let's look at the plot first, and I'll show you what a linear effect looks like based on these data. So this is IQ and performance data, and the hypothesis is that IQ predict, predicts, let's say, job performance. And we look at the scatter plot in, these output, in this output here. And we can see that as IQ increases from left to right, job performance also increases. This is uh, consistent with uh, research that we know to exist in the, uh, in the scientific literature. The higher IQ people tend to, on average, perform better than those uh, lesser in IQ. And we can see that there's a nice linear trend here going from left to right. Uh, I won't sh I'll show you later how to add a, a regression line in addition to a, a curvy. Actually, I should mention, people also call nonlinear regression curvy linear regression. Uh, but in this trend of the in this, this scatter plot, we can see that the, the uh, trend in the data in terms of the effect, it's a positive effect, positive correlation, and there's a linear trend. Now, if we want to estimate that regression effect, we can just go into linear. We put IQ in our independent and performance in our dependent, and it'll give us the uh, regression. We'll get the R value of 0.52, R squared of 27.3 percent of the variability in the dependent variables being accounted for, and it's statistically significant based on this. Again, I'm going through this quickly because this is just a linear regression, and I've already covered this. So what if we have data, however, or by contrast, that are nonlinear, and I've simulated some data that are similar to the uh, linear effect that I just demonstrated. And let's actually look at the plot first, and I'll show you what a nonlinear effect looks like. This is highly idealized. Uh, I had to simulate these data by hand, and I could have spent more time to making it look more realistic. But uh, this is a nonlinear effect, and it's nonlinear because uh, the magnitude or the strength of the association between the independent variable and the dependent variable is dependent upon the independent variable. That's an interaction. And I, I think that's an insightful way of thinking about nonlinear effects is that they're actually the simplest form of interaction possible. Again, I've got other videos on interactions. Uh, using regression, and I encourage you to watch that in terms of if you want to understand what I'm talking about here. So we can see that intelligence increases, uh, uh, rather performance, job performance increases as a function of IQ, but then once you get to an IQ of about 115, things actually start to go downwards. And so the magnitude or the strength of the association between IQ and performance actually depends upon how high your IQ is. And so in this fictitious example, I might hypothesize that in this job, once you get an IQ of about 115-ish, um, you just get bored with this job and you start uh, underperforming to some degree. That doesn't mean that you're performing really poorly, but uh, once your IQ gets quite high, you're not really striving, uh, arguably because you're getting bored. Now, linear regression cannot capture this phenomenon that seems to be systematic. So there's a linear trend and then there's a, a bend there's a one bend in the regression equa line here. I haven't shown you how to put the regression line. I'll show you that in a few minutes. 
But how can we capture this in a linear regression, this nonlinear effect observed in the 